Hello everybody, welcome to the Makers Hour live stream again. Uh, we have no questions in advance this week, so it's going to be a little bit more complicated to try and speak to the camera and also type things at the same time. Uh, but we've got a very full week on Shedlandia this week. We've got lots of projects that we're going to work on. Um, let's give everybody a chance to get in so that I can start saying hello to people. And we have Dr. Lucy Rogers tonight as the host, which is excellent. And we have the first message. Remember to use the make as our hashtag, A182, etc., to respond to questions. Yes, I never do that. I always forget. Ah, hello Kent. Good to hear from you, glad you can make it. There's a little bit of a lag on the uh, on the chat which makes it a little bit strange trying to watch yourself with a few seconds delay and chat and look at Twitter at the same time. <laughs> Well, we'll see how we do. But, uh, yeah, so we've got a, a very busy week coming up in Shedlandia because we've just had an enormous amount of bark chippings and compost arrive. Uh, the plan for this week is to uh, set up some raised beds for the gardening. Um, the weather at the moment isn't on our side. We had ter terrible uh, gusting winds last night. Uh, we, we lost a tile off the roof the other day. Um, and 
I lost some of the uh, just a, f a few little bits of garden pots and things went 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 blowing around the uh, into the distance before I realised what was happening. Uh, so that the weather's not brilliant at the moment. Yeah, and hello to the lurkers. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm known for lurking <laughs> on Twitter, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, t I tend to keep quiet uh, on a lot of a lot of different threads, but I do do keep an eye on what people are doing. And some really great projects out there that people are coming out with. And I'm trying to add more. Uh, more people every week. So if, if you've got any recommendations for people that I could add uh, who are good people to follow, then do do let me know because I would like to see. Um, I wonder what the first question is going to be. Do we have it yet? No, not quite. And we have Rob Ives. Hello, Rob. And Lorraine Underwood. Hello. Caroline Keep. Hi. And of course, David Kirby down there. We've got two. Uh, so where was I? Oh yes, the 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 setup in the garden. We have we have lots of things going on in the garden this week. It's, it's coming to a point where we'll need to think about planting things very soon. So um, we're ju just just starting planting things indoors. You can probably see behind me, actually if I switch to this view, uh, you can probably see behind me there. That's the hydroponic setup that was outside until recently. Um, and that's come inside for various reasons, I'll explain in a little bit. But we have the first question. So. What have you made this week? Show us your makes or your plans or something that inspired you. Well, roll up the sleeve moment. Look, there we go. Rolling my sleeves. My sleeves are rolled. Um, first thing on the list, I suppose, is the wonderful self-healing fuses in the Raspberry Pi mean that I don't have to buy a new one of these because this one has repaired itself from being switched, from being overvolted a while ago. Um, I gave up on it and thought it had had it. Um, this was controlling the lights at one point, uh, but I left it to one side, tried it the other day, stuck a new SD card in there because the SD card I was using was, uh, well, exploded, literally exploded um, when I plugged it into my computer. Uh, so obviously something had blown on the SD card. Uh, but th So that's working again, and that's going to, it's probably going to be another remote camera. Uh, which I will set up somewhere, maybe an indoor chicken cam. Uh, I still have the other chicken cam to finish off, that's one of the projects I'll be working on this week. Um, but most of the stuff that's going on this week is garden related. Uh, we have... Oops, where was it? Aha, excuse me. <laughs> As I said, we're going to set up some... Uh, some raised beds uh, because we're using the no dig method um, because we don't like digging <laughs> and with the no dig method you, you don't basically cut the ground up before you you plant anything you just dig a hole to put what you're planting in and trust to a layer of compost to uh, provide all the nutrients and it's, it seems to be a more sustainable way of of growing things from what I can see and the yields tend to be actually higher from some online experiments, um, I've seen that the yields that people are getting from the no dig method are higher than the yields you get if you use the dig method. Uh, but by a, a good few kilos per, per, per bed. Um, and to that end, we have a plan um, of what we're planting where. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's a terrible, terrible plan. Let's put it this way. Uh, that's about as good as it's going to get by the look of it, I think. Um, you can hopefully see that better than I can. Um, so each each of these pieces of tape represents a bed. 
So we have this L shape of beds. There's an L shape of beds here with a square bed. These already exist. We don't need to make these. Uh, but these beds, all the, all the rest of these beds, uh, don't exist at the moment. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five beds that we need to make. Uh, and this, this strip exists too. Uh, so we've had uh, literally a, ton of, uh, a metric ton of compost delivered. Um, and we have some bark chippings as well to do some other bits and pieces in the garden. And we need to get this out of the way because we want to get the compost out of the way. Obviously it's, it's, it's sitting, uh, sit, sitting near the house at the moment and it's going to be in the way if we leave it where it is. So there we go. So that, that's our plan anyway. That's what we've been making. The main thing, the main thing this week has been hydroponics, I suppose, um, in that they are pretty much a failure. Um, the the thing behind us, we are winding down because it just doesn't work how we want it to, um, and we're switching from. Uh, well, first of all, actually, one of the things we've made is. Um, we made some tomatoes, well, tomato plants, ready to ready to uh, put in. We put them in on the 17th of December, I think, just as uh, obviously uh, very young seedlings. And we did a video about that on Shedlandia.com. Um, but the problem we have, uh, Abby can still hear me, but if I oh, raise the camera up a little so you can see what's going on. There we go. So the problem we've had with this. This was the idea was it was just a little test system that we could use and we'd have we'd have plants in all four of these tiers. Uh, but the problem that we've got, you can see there's only one tier working at the moment, that's because pumping water up to the top and then having it trickle down layer to layer, it's just caused so many problems because we get blockages from anything that comes out of the pots. The pots are quite uh, you can see there, if I just shake that for a second, you see that come at the bottom? Uh, the pots that we're using, if I just show you that, they are mesh pots. Um, and because we didn't line them, all of the uh, all of the vermiculite and perlite has leaked out with the water. So we lost one plant, but I've, I've shut all of these down, uh, just leaving this bottom one running. Um, and we're doing okay actually, if I pull one of these out, there's a little bit of standing water in there at the moment. But if I bring that up to the camera, you can see for, there we go, what was it, uh, just over a month's growth on some uh, tomatoes there, small sort of cherry style tomatoes they are. Um, I think that's pretty good growth. Pretty good growth for uh, a month there. But we're not wasting this. Um, inside here there's heating elements and a water tank and some lights. Uh, the lights I'm replacing uh, with some, some better hydroponic lights essentially. Some, uh, some that have a better red-blue ratio. Uh, which improves the improves the levels of growth. So I'm replacing those, and we're switching off the pumps and taking out the uh, take it taking out the channels at the back that you saw there, uh, and it's going to be replaced with shelves. There, there will be one hydroponic ebb and flow tray at the bottom, uh, which will flood and then drain four times a day. Uh, sorry, not flood and drain. Sorry. Uh, it will work on a float valve, very much like this one. Uh, so the, this this sort of sits this way up in the in the uh, tray, and then we have a valve a float on the end here that when the water level is up, it pushes this level, which stops the flow of water into the tank. And as the water level drops, as the plants drink, then the water comes back in again. 
The advantage of this is you don't need any fancy switching or anything on your pump. Um, you, you can just you just rely on the fact that the the valve will stop the uh, will will stop the thing from flooding. Uh, whereas as it is at the moment, it just relies on a timer and the and the flow rate of the pump from preventing the the thing from sort of overwashing the amount of drainage that's there, and that hasn't worked very well. So we're switching to this because we think this will be a better choice. And instead of ebb and flow, we'll just go with a basic sort of aquaponic system where it it fills up and as the plants drink, it just regulates the level of water in the the bottom and wicks up into the containers rather than uh, relies on sort of a, a pure growth medium or you know uh, vermiculite and things. We'll, ju we'll just use standard compost from now on. Uh, we think that will be a lot more effective and we can scale that up uh, to, to work on the patio as well which is, which is the, uh, the the main point. We, we can use standard buckets to plant vegetables in and we'll get I think eight buckets per length of the channeling that we're using which is just square square guttering um, so we'll, we'll get eight buckets to each length of that and we can fit six six lengths of the guttering um, we, we could actually fit eight but there wouldn't be anywhere to walk so if we, if we leave six with the walkway so we can have eight, eight buckets on each of those rows uh, and we'll be planting a lot of sort of th things that require a lot of water I think is the, the things to put in, the, in that kind of setup. You, you drill a hole in the bottom of your bucket, put, put uh, a kind of a pot in to wick into the, the channel of the water. That way your plants never go short of water. Uh, and as, as they, they suck the water up into the pot, then the, there'll be a water put at the side that, that fills the troughs back up again. And the, that's the reason we're using this uh, float valve system, because we don't need any pumps, we don't need electricity, uh, we don't need a pressurised water supply, although you can use this with a pressurised water supply if you want. Um, so what we'll be doing is, this is a half inch BSP fitting on the end, uh, so if I screw this in a little bit, you can just use a standard sort of hose lock fitting or other type of fitting uh, like this. So it will just screw onto the end, through the end of the um, of the trough or the the tank that you're using, and then you can just use a standard hose fitting to to lock on between whatever you whatever you connected to. So if you do you do want to use a a high pressure system, then there's a flow reduce that will fit in there, and that you do that. Or if you want to use a lower pressure system, then you you don't need the the flow reducer so extensively. There's a there's a finer flow reducer for using. Uh, for using low pressure, and that this is really cheap as well. I mean, if you factor in the cost of the motor and the cost of the fittings and 3D printing and things like that, uh, this this costs about five or six pound for one of these, and you, you need one of these per system that you're using just to maintain the level. Assuming you're only on one level, if if you start doing tiered systems, you need one on each tier, but and you probably need something to pump up then as well, but. Uh, the system we're using will be on one level, so essentially I'll just be able to drop this on, connect this up, and then we'll be good, good to go. Uh, but as I say, the, the system behind isn't going to be wasted, it's going to be converted into a greenhouse system. There's heaters in there, there's lights in there, there'll be better lights in there soon, um, and we'll be able to propagate all of our seeds and things in there. Which is great, because we don't have a greenhouse, and we don't really have anywhere we can put a permanent greenhouse. Um, and we, we, we had one of those um, those little uh, sort of tent pole style mini greenhouse things. We tried that and that it just blew away. Uh, it, it rusted, ripped and blew away is the, is the short answer of what happened to that. I've reused some of the parts from it to make uh, a table for a potting shed and some shelves. But beyond that it, it was just completely ruined. So that was that. Oh, I suppose I should uh, attempt to answer some questions, shouldn't I? Let's see if I can answer a question while I'm talking. Apparently I can't, so I've stopped talking. Haha. <laughs>
Um, yeah, so there's been many things, including the hydroponics, uh, preparing uh, for the outdoor gardens. And also the usual cakes and bread and things like that we've made as well. Yes. I wonder if I keep doing these things. What do you think, people? Are, are people getting value from these? Or am I just shouting into the void again? So Kent's on chat, I was just saying, uh, what have you been making this week? Okay. Uh, let's see what other people have been doing rather than me. Okay. Ah, so there's a model engineering show, I see Workshop Show went to a model engineering show. I wish I had known about that. That would have been quite interesting to see. Now we have some knitting going on. Oh, we have question two. I've waffled through question two. Let's have a look. What's question two? Favourite thing made out of wool? Oh, this is tricky. Um, I don't have anything made out of wool at the moment. Um, no, I really don't. Well, there you go. Can't really answer that question then. I suppose I should just waffle on about uh, the other things that I'm currently up to. And the other things that we're up to. Um, let's have a think. So... Yes, planting. Um, I said earlier that we're going to start planting things soon, and if you're in the UK, you might have raised your eyebrows a little bit at that, because we're still in the latter part of January, which is far too early to plant in the UK usually. Um, and we're planting tomatoes. Some of them are going to be living in the hydroponic setup, or what was the hydroponic setup, uh, with some better lights. Um, and th that's essentially what's already in there is some tumbling tom. They'll be they're a small bush tomato that uh, you can use in a hanging basket and things like that. So they're going to sit in there and and just be useful plants. Um, but beyond that, we also got a lot of other varieties. And I was looking into different varieties. I saw online the other day somebody was talking about uh, Eastern European variety. And so if I take pile of seeds of things that we intend to grow. Um, let's see, I've got some, oh, we've got some uh, curly parsley there that we're growing. That's coming up in the uh, the planter over there, the uh, propagator. Uh, this is some um, 1500 uh, lettuce seeds there. Uh, I've already used some of these, but they do come up, but uh, we haven't used much lettuce actually so far. Uh, we've got mustard as well, and all the usual, th you know, all the usual small things. Uh, we've got some courgettes. They'll be going into one of the buckets on the new hydroponic system. Um, so that's one thing we'll be looking at. So we've got courgettes. Uh, we've got some beetroot as well. Um, the beetroot, if you recall, will be going into one of the the raised beds. Let's see if I can see it. It's here somewhere. There it is. It's going to the square bed. Um, which is opposite where. So we've got the chickens here, this is the square bed, we have our shed here, some lawn and some other space that will be growing things. There's water butts here and a herb garden here and one more trough here, one more uh, raised bed here. So we've got the beetroot. Um, we have some squash as well. We're, we're doing a kind of a sister, what they call sister planting. Uh, so the squash are going to sit at the bottom of beans and peas. Uh, because obviously the beans and peas grow high, the squash grow low. Um, and the squash are quite good at keeping the ground moist as well. 
Uh, the same with marrow. We have some marrow there. We're going to be putting those in. Uh, we have broad beans and peas. Uh, these look quite, quite. Uh, oops, let's see if I can put this somewhere you can see a little bit better. There we go. Um, quite like the look of these. They're purple peas. And you, you sell these in March. Um, back of seed packets are usually very good with this kind of thing. So see we can sow in March with that. Um, and you can either pick them younger, sort of a, a just a petit pois, or you can uh, let them go to the full full size peas and uh, just use the peas as normal. Broad beans always. Uh, I'll find somewhere to put broad beans. Uh, I will be staggering the planting on the peas and the beans as well, so we've got a, we don't get a glut. We get a a staggered crop, which is quite nice. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, inside the hydroponics, we're going to have. Uh, let's get things out of the way because we don't use them that often. Um, we're going to have some different coloured peppers. Uh, so we've got multicolour peppers. Um, we have ordinary carrot and purple carrot. Oops, there we go. And we also have somewhere here. I think there. There we go. We have multicolored carrots, uh, which range from the the normal carrot orange to white to yellow to purple to almost black. Um, there we go, we have a few runner beans left over, that'll be going as well. Tomato wise, we have lots of tomatoes. Um, we have marmanda, which is kind of a Mediterranean tomato. Um, a bit of an odd shape, but a nice flavour. They'll go in sort of uh, Marchish, uh, but they'll, they'll be going outside uh, in, in one of the, the hydroponic setups. We have some broccoli for later in the season. We also have some. Uh, hot peppers as well as the mixed peppers. These will be going probably in here um, because they, they need the extra warmth. Uh, we have some regular lettuce as well. Let's put that there. Whoops, there we go. Knocking things all over the place. There we go. And along with the broccoli, we have some uh, cabbage. And in addition to the regular tomatoes that we've got there and the tumbling tom that we've got in there, um, I got two varieties that are Eastern European tomatoes. So we've got black creme and subarctic plenty. They're used to a much colder climate. They can be planted now. Um, so that, that's how we're planting in January. Uh, so the, at the end of this month, I'm going to put these two. Uh, Varieties in black, uh, black cream, as you would think, is a black, black. It is a black tomato. It's a very purple black, almost like an aubergine type of tomato. Um, and subarctic plenty looks like your regular tomato, but it's it's better tuned to lower temperatures. Um, it stays indoors for about eight weeks after planting, and then it can gradually just be set, put out, um, avoiding frost, and it'll, it'll just harden off. Uh, as as plants do, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of things we're planting there. Uh, but the, the idea is that we're going to reuse the reuse the beds, and we're hoping to get two or three crops from each of these beds. And with the the patio, we should be able to get. Uh, I'm hoping two harvests out of the patio, and we're just using. B and Q buckets for that uh, because they're about the cheapest thing that we could find to to work as a plant pot. I think they're they're 98 pence each for a, uh, a two, two gallon bucket. Um, so if I put all of these out of the way for now, so we have lots of planting to do. This is this is why all this is happening now because we want to keep on top of it this year. Last year was the first year that we sort of broke ground on the uh, on the garden. 
and we just made do. We, we, we shoved things into the ground and hoped because we didn't know what state the soil was in. We didn't really plan it at all. Um, and where we had success was where we did the two, two beds with no dig method. Um, where we planted things directly into the ground, even if we applied uh, fertilizer, there was just very little growth or very poor growth. Uh, because th there's just not enough nutrient in the ground without the fertilizer and the, the manure. So we, in December we dropped um, manure over all the beds and black sheeted them. Um, that'll help us warm the ground up and it'll also kill any weeds off that are under there. Um, as the sun shines on it'll warm the ground up sooner so we can put plants in a little bit earlier. Uh, and in, ooh, in addition to those plants uh, we're also going to try some mushrooms as well. I started that yesterday in fact and there's one in here. So when you send away for a mushroom set, mushroom kit, you can either go with the spores or you can get something like this which is a, a mushroom set. You get this one is shiitake mushrooms and with shiitake mushrooms you have to soak this this substrate for 24 hours in water um, and then you pop it into the provided tray and you leave it somewhere sunny uh, at a high, temp high, high temperature 20 to 25 degrees it should be left at um, and you leave it with good sunlight for a few weeks and then it will start to sprout and form mushrooms and you can pick them off and it will crop two or three times hopefully if you do it right the first time I've tried mushrooms so I don't really know what I'm doing but we'll see what happens and I'll keep a keep a record of that on shedlandia.com in addition to those we have two more sets they look very similar There's Okay, you can see these are a different type of mushroom these are these are white button mushrooms and there's a chestnut mushrooms you can see that there's a layer of white all over the top there that's the uh, the bacteria growing uh, sorry the, the fungus growing uh, and these black bags have uh, compost in them essentially so I need to puncture these bags on either side to, to allow water to get in and then soak them for about half an hour in uh, half a litre of water each. So I'll pop, pop both of these into a litre of water and uh, give them a soak tomorrow. And then you em empty it over the top and the tray comes with its own propagator lid. So you just pop the propagator lid over the top and again you leave them on a windowsill somewhere to uh, to do their thing and become mushrooms. I'm hoping these these will be okay. They're, they were bought direct from the seed money from uh, Sutton's Sutton Seeds. Um, I've seen them sort of on Amazon and on the internet before, but I'm a little bit dubious about using sort of seeds from Amazon when you don't know how long they've been how long they've been in there. You know, there's a there's a good chance that seeds seeds from Amazon won't. Uh, won't be as fresh as the one straight from the seed manufacturer. I mean they, they may but if you read the reviews underneath a lot of the mushroom sets that you buy on Amazon you see that people say oh that I've planted these they didn't sprout. Uh, whereas I would imagine the seed manufacturer is going to be pretty good. So let's see what we're doing. I've got another question there. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, anybody tell me what question? There we go. Show me your favourite thing made out of wood and take who made it. Hmm. I don't know. Possibly the shed itself? I don't know. 
it's an obvious answer, but it's all I can think of off the top of my head to, for things that are made of wood. Um, and tag the person who made it was me. So I will say that. And once again, I didn't tag makers out. Ooh. You know, it's every time, every time I send one of these tweets, I forget to put the maker tag on the first time. The makers are attack mode. And just a reminder for anybody who who isn't uh, watching currently. Very difficult to concentrate on doing two things at once. I apologize if I just sit here being very quiet, but I'm trying to type a tweet when I do that, so we'll see what happens. So where are we standing now? So what have the people have been saying? Yes. Oh, apparently handmade air is trending on Twitter. Mm, do we have rivals? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Ken says we're making some stringed instruments. Oh, planted that California poppers and nasturtiums. Hmm. Right. Nasturtiums are quite handy actually they they attract black fly uh, that they, they act as a they, they act as kind of a dummy plant uh, sorry a, a decoy plant too when when you're gardening so that they will attract the black fly rather than uh, the other plants in your garden which means you can you can dispose of them as required um, also you get an interesting thing of ants farm aphids for honey. They herd them together onto one plant. It's quite remarkable. Hmm. So what else do we have? Questions for the favourite thing made out of metal. Um, oh, I've no idea who made it, but it was uh, it was a boat. That was great. Hmm. Sorry, I have many windows open. I'm trying to navigate myself back to the situation where I can use uh, where I can use the Twitter window. Let's have a look. Excellent.
Yeah, it's very difficult to send a tweet at the moment because I have too many things happening and only one monitor. I've been thinking recently about getting a second monitor. I'm not entirely sure I'd put it. The only problem is that it's desk space, as always, is a premium, you know, and I've got one monitor in here. I could really use a second one, but figuring out where to put the thing is just a nightmare. It's virtually impossible to try and figure out where I should put this monitor. So difficult. See if I actually have a picture of my boat, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, to do, there we go. And it was made by Springer out of an old gasometer. And once again, I forgot to put the actual, oh, the bank is our tag on again. Really, is there a way of doing this automatically? Does anybody know if I can do this automatically? I really do loathe the fact that I keep doing that. Ah, it's been seen anyway, that's fine. Excellent. <laughs> ah yes, more tea doctor has pointed out that possibly something even better than the boat is that. And she's quite right of course, the wedding ring is much better than the boat. I stand corrected. Hmm. Yeah, so we have handmade hour and maker hour running at the, concurrently. Oh, yes, okay. Hmm. Well, some of the people saying there's some really nice things made out of metal here, I can see. <laughs> yes, wild wall. Very well done, yes. <laughs> hey, so does anybody have any comments on the, the setup of the screen like this? Um I'm not sure if it works for people or not. So you have to let me know what you think. Yeah, PCBs, Archie. Yeah, that's a good point. PCBs are made out of metal. Um, but I'm going to have to stick with uh, Morty Doctor's answer of the wedding ring, I'm afraid. I stand corrected. Uh, Alfred Chow. Yeah, record planes are very nice. Yeah. Uh, sorry, router. Sorry, yeah. Else do we have? 
Yes, but we have some really nice things. That's a, a little tin bear. Yeah, shortbread tin. Carl, you have to do something with that. That is fantastic little bear, I think. Are many people doing custom Alexis? Is, is, is it now a thing? Um, I, th I thought about building Alexa into an old uh, an old Sorry, phone I have. What is that? Hmm. Cancel Alexa. <laughs> Cancelling. Yes. I always forget that there's there's an Amazon dot in here. Uh, and so I tend to, to just say the name out loud. But it are are people are people using the Amazon dot in custom ways? I know you can roll your own with the Raspberry Pi. I did think about doing that. Uh, but it works out cheap to just buy an Amazon dot. So maybe I'll get one to take apart one day. It'd be quite interesting. Um, I doubt there's any user, user serviceable parts in there. I haven't looked at the teardown. I'd imagine it's probably just all potted together. Ah, so I'm baking one side of my body with a heater there. I've just turned it off. I'm not sure what else we're doing this week. In, uh, I don't think we're doing anything that will involve metal very much. Hmm. Oh, actually, we do have another project on uh, on the go. We're going to make uh, an automatic feeding system for the chickens. At the moment, they just have a kind of a, a mash feeder and uh, uh, essentially a, tr a trough with an umbrella over it. Um, and we're going to try and make them something a little bit more automated um, and also very simple. So not, not essentially mechanical automation, just gravity based mm -hmm. feed. Uh, that, that's that's another project we're working on. Mm. Yes, Morty Doctor says, what about the Amazon new Amazon Alexa gadgets? Yeah, there are new gadgets, aren't there? Maybe we should think about one of those. Um, I would quite like to build one into an old telephone. I, I did it as a project a long time ago to work uh, to work as a Skype phone. And it, it would also work as a Google phone and it would it would ring the bell when you received a te text message or when you received a call. Uh, it's completely outdated now, all the APIs have changed. Uh, I'd like to get it working again though. And I also want to replace the inside of it because it was it was just at the time when Arduino first came out. Um, and I was using the technology of the time essentially. So I was using uh, the, the original Arduino and I was using uh, 7805 voltage regulators and things like that. And sort of op amps and so on. But it's things have come a long way since then. I can use a book converted power supply, there'll be no, no heat dissipation. Um, I can use ESP8266 and have the thing connect as an object on the on the uh, uh, wirelessly connect. Uh, I can make the whole thing a lot smaller. There's the, the original one has a separate box sticking on the outside. Um, sort of a project box with the old Arduino and power supply and things in and then it feeds inside the old phone and the, the wires all split out and do that but with with the things like the Arduino Prime Mini because it's so small and the book converter is so small I should be able to just have a single USB cable out for the back and a power cable out of the back and that should be enough I think to power the whole thing um, in fact, if I, if I used an 8-core cable, uh, I just used an RJ45 
connection at one end, I, I could spit off to USB at the other end, and that that would solve uh, solve a few problems. <coughs> Else we have yes number five from short circuit that was a lovely piece of puppetry um, I, I think didn't somebody do a make didn't somebody make uh, one recently make a new one <laughs> yes. Yeah, the screen on the Amazon spot. Um, the, with, with the camera being in there, I think I do, I do use the drop-in version, the drop-in feature on the dot. But on the spot, if if you you could just drop in and have the image turn on, you you could be absolutely horrified, couldn't you? Uh, if if you weren't expecting it, uh, it's it's like the old space ball sketch where there's the the video screen comes in while he's in the bathroom. <laughs> yes. I really would be worried about having one of those on Amazon Spot. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the battery's going in my mouse. How awkward is that? It's cut, cut out a couple of times. I thought I thought it was just me, but it's actually starting to to wobble a bit. Well, hopefully, I'll get all the way through the uh, all the way through the broadcast. Um, we can hope. I'll just nobody move. Nobody move anything. I need to get through the broadcast. What else do we have? Oh, we're on another question. Let's have a look. Where are we now? I've missed a question. Favorite thing ever that someone has made, and tag who made it. Hmm. Well, that's gonna have to be the same as the thing made of metal, isn't it? Favorite thing ever. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, Diana, there are Diana props, is that right? Um, art machine, seen with a Dremel doing foam engraving. It's called a Probot. That's excellent. I'm still seriously considering uh, laser engraver, or oh, laser cutter. Um, I'm just wondering whether the. Uh, the chassis should be extruded aluminium or whether it should be bar. I'm veering towards extruded, alumi extruded aluminium at the moment because I think it will be sturdier. What else do we have? Yeah, it's ticklish only me. Waves around, hands around, pointing at everything ever. Yeah, it's it's difficult to choose sometimes, isn't it? I uh, I have a lot of favourite projects, uh, but then again, some projects are only favourite until 
the parts in them become more valuable than the sentimental value that they have. And then they get pulled apart and recycled and used as something else. And look at that, we're already approaching the end with five minutes to go. Just over five minutes to go. Um, so I suppose to sum summarise what we're doing this week, uh, we'll be putting some raised beds into the garden. Um, we'll be repurposing this hydroponic system uh, into a mini greenhouse for propagating the plants with just a single hydroponic bed in it and some shelves for just ordinary propagation um, in, uh, in compost. We have loads of compost and bark chip in just, just being delivered today. Um, we have the wood for the beds has already been delivered so we can get on with that. Um, I have my shiny Christmas present for making the uh, making the beds. I have the impact driver, uh, which just really does make a difference with those kind of jobs. Um, so we've got some better grow lights coming for the hydroponics. Um, the water heating system will probably be disconnected from the hydroponics, so I don't think we need that now. Um, we'll be building a full-size hydroponic system outside. With, uh, we'll start with a single uh, two meter length, I think. Um, then we'll extend that to six, if I remember right. Uh, that'll be on a gravity feed system with a water butt that uses this float valve uh, and these fittings to connect. Um, beauty of this float valve by the way is it can work at high or low pressure I think I mentioned that already but that means we can connect it to a hose as well if we want if we don't want to go to the water butt but if we use the water butt then we can um, we can add plant feeds and things into there which is which is great uh, we'll be experimenting with some Euro Eastern European tomato varieties uh, subarctic Subarctic Plenty and Black Crim, I think, are the ones that we're working with. And they can be planted at the end of this month. And then eight weeks later, they'll go out uh, as fully fledged, pl fledged, fledged plants. And we've also got some mushrooms going as well. So we've got quite a full full selection there. We have three types of mushrooms, three types of, four types of tomato, in fact, because we've got Marmanda tomato, Black Crim, um, Subarctic Plenty and Tumbling Tom in the hydroponic thing behind me at the moment. Uh, we have shiitake, white mushroom and chestnut mushroom. We have uh, beans, three different types of carrots, peas, many things. We have a lot of things to plant. We have a lot of work to do to, to get them to come up. Um, and we also have a second and possibly a third planting after that as well once we've, once we've got the first harvest. On top of that we'll be doing all of our usual preservation um, pres preservation things. We've got the all three of the chickens are laying now so we've got uh, almost uh, two dozen eggs a week coming in. Uh, so we're doing a lot of cakes and things like that. I may pickle some eggs. Uh, may do some eggs in uh, in lime to, to preserve them, depending how we do. Although realistically, I mean, they, they didn't really stop laying over this winter, so I'm not sure if we need to preserve. Maybe we will for next winter, but uh, we're, we're okay for this year. I think I don't need. I can always give away extra eggs if we get too many eggs. Uh, we have the chicken feed stuff we're going to be doing as well. Um, so we, we've got a new food system we're going to build so that they can be fed automatically and watered automatically. They are to some extent now anyway, but we have to sort of change their food every, well, add, add more food every two or three days. It would be nice if we could do that a little bit longer, and if it was something that wasn't out in the open that other things might be able to get to, uh, which we have moved inside because there's a, there's a bird flu warning about, I think, so... We've had to move all of the food inside and keep the chickens inside a little bit more. Uh, oh, we also have uh, a, a sand bath we're putting together called the dust bath for them uh, because this weather's absolutely rubbish 
um, they aren't getting much of an opportunity to use a dust bath. Uh, and obviously that that's good. That keeps mites and things down. And I think that's about everything we're doing in the next week. It's my 40th birthday on Friday. Um, so I've booked from now until the 5th of February as holiday. Uh, so I don't have any official sort of ordinary work to do, aside from some magazine articles and things like that, which I'll be getting out. I think I'm in the next Hackspace magazine, actually. Um, that's hopefully coming through the door in the next few days. I think I'm in this one. Uh, with an article on something. I did an article on something. Oh, it's the chicken door opener. Yeah, I did an article on the chicken door opener. And I may be in the one, not the next one, the one after that as well, I think, with another project. Um, and possibly some other magazines and things. I'm, I'm starting to pick up a lot more writing than I was previously, so we'll see what comes out of that and we'll see what we get. Uh, that gives us almost the end of Maker's Hour. Um, so I think we're probably going to call that there as the end of the ma live Maker's Hour. Um, thanks for the Guild of Makers putting the Maker Hour on again this, this week. Thanks to Dr. Lucy Rogers for presenting it. Um, and if you joined in Thanks for listening. Oh, another thing, I have a Patreon page now. Um, so if anyone does want to support what we do in Shedlandia and helps, wants us to make some more videos of more makes and things, get over there and just give us your support. Even if you just follow us on YouTube or visit the site to read the articles, that helps us out. So spread the word, tell people you enjoy watching us, and we will see you in a little while. Next Wednesday, in fact.